If you're a kid looking for a reptile or you're a parent looking for a reptile for your kid, I've got five great options for you. My name's Adam, this is Diamond. You're watching Wiccans Wicked Reptiles. Stick around. <laughs> I wanna do a huge disclaimer here. If you are the parent watching this, it's ultimately your responsibility. If you get a reptile for your kid, it's all well and good to say, hey, you have to have a paper route, cut lawns, whatever, in order to fund the actual reptile, and you have to be responsible enough to actually keep it. But at the end of the day, kids will be kids, and it is your responsibility if you get a reptile for your child. And always supervise, right? All of these animals are not going to be dangerous to your kid at all. These are going to be kid-friendly reptiles, but at the same time, for the sake of the reptile, mostly, keep an eye on your kid when they're handling the animal. Oh, and lastly, have some money set aside because things like UVB, they can get kind of expensive. We'll get into that in a sec. And uh, all of these animals are going to be small enough to fit into a kid's room, but big enough that they're not gonna hurt the animal. They won't be super fragile, so they'll be handleable for your kid. Number five. Russian tortoises. Now this is an animal I don't ever talk about on the channel because I don't own one. The reason I don't own one is because I like bigger tortoises, things like cherry heads, uh, even sulcuttas. I just like bigger tortoises. But Russians are smaller, so they could actually fit in the corner of your room in a nice enclosure. You don't need a giant pen like you would for even something as small as a red foot, which might get to only 12 inches. These guys will be five to eight, the Russian tortoises. So it's one of the smallest tortoises that is reasonable to keep as a pet because, well, they're not ridiculously big, they don't cost a ton, they're not difficult to care for, and most tortoises need just that, a pen, like a, a trough that you'd use to feed cattle, right? Or something custom built. You can easily buy an enclosure that is big enough for these animals, and there's a link in the description below to cages. They're my favorite cage manufacturer, enclosure manufacturer, and the four by two by two, from what I gather, is the perfect size. But of course, before you get any reptile, make darn sure you actually do the effort and put in the research before you get the animal. This is not a care guide, I'm just giving you ideas so you can research these animals further. Now what I love about the Russian tortoises and most tortoises, especially for children, is that they, well, they have a shell, right? So it doesn't mean that they're indestructible. You just do have to be careful around pets, but for your child, if, you know, they kind of play with them a little bit rougher, it's gonna be okay. Not that you should play rough with your animals, I'm not saying that. I just mean that you're not gonna be able to rip its tail off or it's gonna be a little bit more hardy than some species, which is why we're not gonna put leopard geckos or crested geckos on the list. I just think they're more fragile, too fragile for some kids. Now what's really nice, especially for the parents, is you don't have to go out and buy insects. So there's not gonna be insects all over your house if that's a deal breaker for you. They're herbivores. So they're gonna eat dark leafy greens, they're gonna eat uh, Swiss chard and endive and uh, potatoes, uh, sweet potato rather. So if you don't mind cooking up sweet potato a couple times a week and going to the grocery store and getting a spring mix or growing it in your garden, you're good to go. And if you have a big enough yard in an area like, I don't know, Nevada, uh, Central Texas, places like that where it could work to keep them outside, you could do that too. Keep in mind, UVB does need to be changed. So UVB is ultraviolet B. So like it's, there's different types of ultraviolet light. You get them from the sun. UVA is something that you're going to get from a basking bulb most likely, which you do need because you need to create a hot spot. You'll figure this out when you do your research. But keep in mind, you do need to replace that UVB bulb every six to 12 months. So something for your children to, uh, I don't know, do chores or do something to, to get the money for because the bulbs are sometimes 40 bucks each. So something to keep in mind. Anyway, we've been going on a long time for these. Let's move on. Number four, hog island boas. Now, normally I wouldn't recommend a boa for a kid because some boas, like my girl Franny, can get eight plus feet. That's not great for a child. But insular boas, so boas that come from islands, oftentimes are smaller. Hog island boas are gonna be between three and five feet, depending. Males are smaller, females are a little bit bigger. My hog island boa is a sweetheart, puppy dog. If I handle this animal, I don't have to worry about a thing. So their temperament is great, and they're not gonna scare your kid because, well, they're not going to be nippy and flighty and all of that. A great thing too, and something that is a little bit different than ball pythons, because I'm sure you expected ball pythons to be on the list, and they do work. 
I just think that maybe hog islands would be better because although you do have to feed rodents, that is what they eat, they are carnivores, they're going to eat them. Sometimes with ball pythons, it can be discouraging, especially for people with shorter attention spans, uh, that they might not eat the rodent sometimes. I've got some ball pythons that go off of food for several months. Pikachu goes off for five months all the time. So a hog island boa will actually eat most of the time, if not all the time. And I think this is a great option because you don't have to throw away rodents. Also because they're semi-arboreal, if you want something that's really nice for your kid's room or even your living room, that is gonna be nice to look at rather than just a box with an animal in it. You can make these big elaborate enclosures. They look absolutely beautiful, stunning. I love the way that they can look. And also this animal just, although it's not going to be as slow moving as a ball python, it's going to move a little bit more and be more interesting. A ball python you can plop on your lap and it's gonna sit there for the entire length of the movie or video edit or whatever you're doing. Where with these animals, they're more curious, they're gonna be moving, they're more fun in my opinion. There's a whole care guide, right? Whichever corner pops. Okay, let's move on to the next one. Number three, spotted pythons. Or really any member of the Antaresia family, which just these the smallest genus of python in the entire world. So these are of the smallest pythons in the world. They're from Australia. They're semi-arboreal. So again, they do like to use a little bit of height, but they're even smaller than the hog island boas. These guys will generally top out at around four feet. It is possible you get outliers that get bigger or smaller, but that's generally where they're going to be. They're very calm. They're smart. The way they move, in my opinion, is really interesting because Semi-arboreal snakes and arboreal snakes, they'll really hang on to you. They're very strong, but not strong enough that they're going to be intimidating, let's say, especially considering these animals are literally only four feet. So even if there was something that happened and it did bite you for whatever reason, because anything with a mouth can bite, including your dog, including your cat, including the turtle that you've always had. So. It's very good, very rare, but if it did happen, it'd be a non-event. You are you might not even notice it even happened, right? I've been bit by small snakes. A lot of the time you don't even know. I remember my sister got bit by a hog island boa a few months ago, and she thought that she got whipped in the tail or whipped in the face with her tail because she couldn't even, didn't even realize what happened. Just She just knew something hit her, and the only reason she knew is because there was pinpricks from her teeth. So these small snakes, even if something were to happen, like the craziest event, I've never got bit by any of these, knock on wood, you probably wouldn't notice. You're not going to the hospital. It's not getting infected. It's not gonna scare you or your kid away. It's not gonna hurt anybody. You're gonna be a-okay. Again, these animals do eat rodents, but you can generally get away with adult-sized mice or jumbo-sized mice rather than getting rats, which is a little bit cheaper. So I recommend frozen thawed for all of these snakes. That just means you buy them frozen, then you thaw them either overnight just on the counter, or you can put them in water, which is what I do, and they thaw in about two hours, uh, and then you dry them off, and then you feed your snake. So it's really easy. You don't have to worry about keeping live animals. You don't have to watch a live animal die. These animals that are frozen thawed, the way that they are dispatched is very humane with CO2, so they go to sleep and they just never wake up. So it is completely humane. You don't have to feel bad for the rodents. I mean, that's what they're bred for in the first place. But spotted pythons, I just think that they're beautiful. They're not expensive either. You don't have to worry about a ton of different morphs. If you want something even smaller than a spotted, you can get an anthill python. They're more expensive, but same family, Antaresia. Just overall, these are amazing pythons. I would highly recommend them for anybody, but they'd be fantastic for kids. Number two, it's your time to shine, Diamond. Bearded dragons. Now, I know this is gonna be obvious and kind of a boring option, but bearded dragon, I think, as long as the parent truly does take responsibility for this animal outright, if something were to happen, if the kid gets bored, keep in mind, all of these animals don't live short lives like hamsters. They're gonna live, you know, 15 plus years, but these animals are big enough where you can handle them, right? I mean, Diamond, I just can kind of grab him. His tail's not gonna fall off. Don't grab him by the tail or anything, but he's big and substantial enough that I never feel like, oh no, something's gonna happen. I might accidentally drop him. Like, he's gonna hang on to you too. He's got these really strong hands. Hello there, what's up? And uh, just overall, very calm. I mean, I put this animal on my shoulder every video. There's no way that I can edit enough to make it seem like something it's not. This animal is just super chill all the time. Now they do like higher basking spots, so higher temperatures on their basking area is what I mean, so that you might need a little bit of a hotter bulb, but although that is the case, it's still not that expensive for your power bill. If I had to guess, he probably cost me eight bucks a month. 
and power, maybe. And I live in Southern Ontario, which is one of the most expensive places in the entire world for hydroelectricity. Germany, I know, you don't have to leave your comments. I know you guys are more expensive. <laughs> I see it every week in the comments. But this animal is the best animal that I have to hand to a kid by far, this individual. And most bearded dragons are like this. So you're not gonna get too many outliers. Now they're gonna get a little bit bigger than a leopard gecko or African fat tail, which is why I actually recommend them because they're a little bit more robust, maybe 24 inches. Now diamond's about 18 inches if I had to guess. So he's one of the smaller males that I've ever seen. So a male might get a little bit bigger, but they're not gonna be unmanageable. They're very unlikely to bite you, very unlikely. The only time I've ever been bit by bearded dragons is when they think I'm food. Like diamond seeing the shiny plugs in my ears and trying to bite those. Otherwise, never had a defensive bite in my life in that I've had bearded dragons since 2009. So it's been a while. Same thing goes with the tortoise, with the bearded dragon, UVB. They like a very strong UVB, so uh, at least a 10.0. Mine has a 14.0, it's the dragon by Arcadia. I don't have an affiliate link, I make no money, just you can go find it. That's what I recommend for this guy here. I keep mine in a four by two by two. There's a link right here to how to set up the enclosure if you're interested in how to do that. I'm literally sweating right now, it's very warm in here. But it's very easy, very simple. This animal, once you get it set up, costs next to nothing. They do eat bugs, right? And they do eat uh, vegetables. So I feed mine mostly Swiss chard, endive, things I grow in my garden, and then spring mix for the winter. And then I feed crickets and sometimes mealworms and superworms. If I had to guess, every month, this animal in total, with everything, probably costs, it costs me less than 20 bucks a month, easy. N like no questions asked probably way less than that. And especially because I've got a hundred reptiles, so I buy in bulk. But even if you are just a family with one animal, 20 bucks is probably all you're gonna spend every single month. And that's if you live in a place where it's expensive to buy things. If you live in most parts of the US, it'll be a lot cheaper than that. I could go on and on. I love this animal. This is my favorite animal in my collection by far. Let's move on to number one. Number one, best animal for kids, in my opinion, corn snakes. I love corn snakes. Now I used to talk trash about them because there are instances where you can get nippy corn snakes, but as long as you're selective in the process of getting an animal, and I would recommend, especially if it's for a kid, get an animal that is say a sub-adult, so just before adulthood, so your child can watch them grow up and experience that really fun part of owning a pet. But if you get a baby, it's a little bit more difficult if they're not tamed down already and babies can be nippy and that can turn off your kid and then that could be lights out, right? It could change their mind about the animal. But if you get an animal right away that is going to be very slow moving or not super fast, I should say, uh, very calm, deliberate with its movement, not scary, not gonna bite you, eats every time, that in my opinion is the best animal for a child. So. And that's why corn snakes work. So get an animal from a breeder, tell them what you want, make sure that they know, hey, this is for a kid, I don't want my kid to get bit, give me an animal that's perfectly fine. Like the animal that I have. Corn, that's the name of my corn snake, is a sweetheart, just a doll, and that's why I have the animal. It's a great ambassador, I will have zero issue ever handing this to a kid. When my friend comes over with his daughter, I plop it in her hands, no questions asked, and she loves this animal. She comes in, hey, can I see corn? So. Yeah, no issues at all. I love it, the, and they're easy too. Another another animal where you get a four by two by two enclosure, so 120 gallon enclosure. It takes up eight square feet of space, it's next to nothing. You put in a light in there. They don't need UVB. I do recommend it because they do exhibit some diurnal behavior sometimes. So I recommend it, but you don't need one. Get a heating element, so a basking bulb or whatever you wanna do. There's a care guide right here. Just super easy. And again, they're gonna eat rodents, you have to change the substrate once a month or do a bioactive build, maybe some things for them to hide under, a water dish, some logs. Like all in all, I can't imagine this animal would cost more than 10 or 15 bucks a month to deal with. It's one of the cheaper animals and of course, it's easy as well. It's an animal that if you don't handle it every day, it's not going to care. And as soon as you're ready to handle it after a week or two of your vacation or you just didn't have time, it's gonna be as docile as the day that you put it back in the enclosure last time. So there you go. Those are my top five best reptiles for kids. Thank you so much for watching. If you don't mind, please hit the like and subscribe. It really helps the channel. And as always, a special thanks to the Patreon supporters. You guys get discounts on the merch, videos early. You got that really cool vlog that Dave Kaufman and I did together last week. It's only on Patreon. Uh, everything from Thailand, which I'm either there now or next week, depends when this video comes out. 
you guys get all that stuff extra, extra early. So for as little as a dollar a month, you can support me there. Uh, and that's it because we do videos on Mondays and Thursdays. That means I'll see you in the next one.